Hey guys, it's Jake, Loaf, Loaf Pow, for the bakery, still the illness and storm wind. And today we're gonna talk about another mental health conversation that I find super important to me as someone that suffers from a mental illness, which is addiction, drug addiction, and specifically addiction with Adderall, alcohol, and marijuana, and how a combination of those three drugs, you know, kinda not only led to my psychotic breakdown that I had about six months ago, but a history over the last 10 years of use really did uh, some damage. Okay, so we're really talking about drug use versus drug abuse and how the line in between the two is addiction because the second you become an addict and the, you start having addiction-like behaviors, that's really when the drug abuse starts to become rampant and it's really a slippery slope because you may not even realize you're an addict, your friends may not realize you're an addict, and one of the hardest things about being an addict is that you don't present yourself like one. You know, people don't run around screaming, hi guys, I'm a drug addict, can I buy some drugs from you? You know, they wanna integrate as much as possible into society so that, you know, whether it be not being judged or, you know, they're able to continue on with their behavior, it is something that is really difficult to just pinpoint from the start on where that line is being crossed. So in regards to myself, you know, I've had an Adderall prescription on and off. When I was 18, I had one. I got one after my dad died at the beginning of 2021. And it was something that I had also been buying Adderall from the streets in those in-between periods. And I was really lucky that I didn't get any fentanyl or any of that kind of stuff that was laced with fake Adderall because it would have likely have killed me. So not only is there the risk of the actual drugs, but if you're getting them through non-traditional channels or they're non-traditional drugs, there's also just the risk that you're not gonna get the right thing and it could kill you. And having used drugs from the time I was 15 to 28, you know, from as a experimenting phase in high school to a more experimenting phase in college to, you know, borderline addiction there to just sliding into addiction post-college and justifying that with my work because I was like, well, if I'm doing more work, then I can do more drugs. You can start to see where a pattern develops where, you know, is it just the work? Is it just the environment? Or is it something that you yourself are now wanting to do and diving now into why you may want to do those things? So I was diagnosed with ADHD when I was like 17, 18 years old, my senior year of high school. I went to a psychiatrist, you know, they checked me out. Um, one of the funny things was I walked into the room, the guy said, do you have any focus issues? I was like, what? And you know, immediately he prescribed me some Adderall. Now, with that being said, when that went forward, I was always like, well, even if I don't have a doctor's script, I have a doctor's permission because, well, he knows that I'm ADHD or they've recognized that I'm ADHD, so this drug must be good for me. In reality, as I later learned when I got my bipolar diagnosis in the hospital from inpatient, you know, literally from a psychotic breakdown that part of it was Adderall induced, you know, it actually wasn't good for me. It was something I shouldn't probably have been taking and it was really pushing me to become manic, which, you know, we'll go into in a different video, like what that looks like and what being manic really feels like. It, it's not good. Even if it feels great, you could feel like a world champion, but you're treating your body like a fight dog and it's just really a nasty experience. So I, I don't want, you know, I hope no one that's watching this um, has to go through severe manic episodes or psychosis or anything like that um, because they can be induced from drugs. But if you find yourself doing that, you know, I highly recommend that you get help like I did because otherwise it becomes something that um, can do irreparable damage. So signs that you're sliding from drug use into drug abuse are a few as follows. And I'm gonna get my handy dandy social turtle notebook and we're going to go through them right quick. One, it consumes most of your day, right? If getting high is really just a focal point of your day, then you may be slipping into addiction phases because sure, it's a nice thing to enjoy. And for marijuana, it might be fun to smoke a little weed and you know do that whole thing. But if your whole day is focused around getting high, that's actually gonna become an issue because how are you gonna deal with the real world consequences and or you know, relationships you have to have. If all of a sudden you can't smoke weed, you are now dependent on it. And you know, in, in uh, relation to that, pretty much addicted. 
Um, your social activities, if they're super focused around drugs, I work in the entertainment business, go to a lot of shows, go to a lot of parties, you know, a lot of that stuff has drug culture wrapped into it. And it's something that you need to be careful of as I honestly wasn't. And it ended up being something that developed into a habit for me. And your friends, man, that's a really important one. Uh, my dad used to always say you are who you surround yourself with. So if you're surrounding yourself with a lot of people that do a lot of heavy drugs, you're going to think it's normal and normalize the behavior when in reality, you know, maybe casual use in certain categories, having a glass of wine, drinking a little alcohol at a party or, you know, whatever, smoking weed in the evenings or at other social events, fine. Um, you know, if you're actually ADHD and taking Adderall on prescription, great taking Adderall so you can stay up for three days straight working on music, not so good. But I've done that more times than I can count and it's something that ultimately did a lot of damage. The last thing I really wanna talk about is using grief to justify addiction and drug use. Now this was something that came near and dear to my heart because this is what ultimately caused me to have a sliding slope, not only to end up becoming a full-blown addict, but to end up having to go to rehab and really triggering my psychotic breakdown to end up going inpatient because of all the drugs I was doing. And that trigger was my dad dying on Christmas to COVID um, of 2020. And immediately after that, I just wanted to numb everything out. I started drinking all the time. I started smoking more weed. I smoked these things called pops, which is where you would put tobacco and then weed on top of it, smoke in one hit pops down and it would be such a head rush and you know smelling terrible the tobacco really bad for your lungs and people would ask me Jake why are you smoking those and I'd look at them with a straight face and say because I don't want to feel anything at all and that's a horrible reason to justify drug use because clearly you're not coping with something that's going on um, you're just using it as a band-aid that constantly you're going to have to reapply and use more and more and more to try and capture that same first feeling that you did when you used it the very first time, which is why it's not actually a good method to deal with grief or to deal with sadness because ultimately your sadness can continue until you actually address the problem. The drugs can run out. You may have to get more of them. Um, you may have to get stronger ones. It's just something that's really a slippery slope. You know, after that process, I was super proud, thankful, and happy to even go to rehab because not everyone has that opportunity. I still wear the Live Strong that says recovery rocks because it does. And it's a process that I'm really just trying to, you know, raise awareness for with this YouTube page and with this series where by talking about these types of things, by openly sharing the struggles that I've had with addiction, with my mental illness, and with the fact that having a mental illness makes you more likely to become an addict, hopefully people can realize that this is something that anyone could go through. No matter what life throws you, you can get back up. And there's really an ability to try again, right? And that's ultimately what I had to do where it was like, did I like my life when I was addicted to drugs? No. Was I able to even focus on the things I didn't like when I was addicted to drugs? No. So now that I've started to become more sober, that I've started to become more clear, I was able to ultimately make better decisions and you know start addressing the things in my life that actually were a problem. Um, so I'm super happy about that. And you know it's something that I'll continue to work on. Whoa, thank you guys for an awesome video, for watching, for checking it out. Be sure to share, drop a comment, subscribe if this was something that you know you enjoyed and you have someone that you've known that suffered from addiction or you think that someone that may be suffering that could use something like this to let them know that simply we can all go through it. It's something we can get through and with better communication, better resources, you know, and better coping mechanisms, we don't have to like turn to drugs, we can actually turn to each other and use that as a way to heal and grow better as a community. So once again, it's Jake, Jewel, Jaywell, Loaf Pal, and your favorite baker. This is for the bakery. Because as soon as you start to go to drug abuse, you really are showing signs of being- Sorry. Is that?
Is that to say goodbye? Yeah. By Pipo Fernandez. <laughs> All right, we're gonna let that release slide. Today. We're gonna. It's also the release date for to say goodbye for Pipo Fernandez. All right, let's try. <laughs> let's try another take. I'm gonna put that in the outtakes.